In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. As a rational animal, man has no choice about using his reason, so that if he does not use it consciously and philosophically, he will use it unconsciously and superficially. The human mind is bound to search for the truth about God, about the world, and about man. But the present condition of our nature is such that the answer to those vital questions is not easily reached. I am talking about natural truths here, since the supernatural order is totally out of our reach without God's revelation. At the very beginning of his Summa Theologica, St. Thomas writes the following. It was necessary for man's salvation that there should be a knowledge revealed by God besides a philosophical science built up by human reason. Firstly, indeed, because a man is directed to God as to an end that surpasses the grasp of his reason. And he quotes Isaiah here, the eye hath not seen, O God, besides thee, what things thou hast prepared for them that wait for thee. And he continues, but the end must first be known by men who are to direct their thoughts and actions to the end. Hence, it was necessary for the salvation of man that certain truths which exceed the human reason should be made known to him by divine revelation. Even as regards those truths about God which human reason could have discovered, it was necessary that man should be taught by a divine revelation, because the truth about God, such as reason could discover, would only be known by a few, and that after a long time, and with the admixture of many errors. Whereas man's whole salvation, which is in God, depends upon the knowledge of this truth. Therefore, in order that the salvation of man might be brought about more fitly and more surely, it was necessary that they should be taught divine truths by divine revelation. It was therefore necessary that besides a philosophical science built up by reason, there should be a sacred science learned through revelation. That's the end of the quote. So what does a divine revelation teach regarding God, the world, and man? It teaches that in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. It teaches that God created man to his own image. Male and female, he created them. God commanded them to increase and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. We have all of those things revealed in the first book of the Bible, in the first chapter of Genesis. We live in a society that has abandoned those revealed truths. Evolution has replaced God the creator, male and female. I had to Google the number of genders today, 58 as of today, 58 genders. Birth control and abortion have destroyed the family, the family which is the foundation of society. And we have a sick worship of nature today that seeks to nullify man's right to fill the earth and subdue it. So you see how necessary those uh, truths <clears throat> are for mankind, even though we are able to know those things using our reason alone. But the stupidity of mankind seems to have no limits. Even after revelation, we abandon the truth. 
the visible world exists so that man can come to the knowledge of its invisible creator. Or, as Blaise Pascal put it, just as all things speak about God to those that know him and reveal him to those that love him, they also hide him from all those that neither seek nor know him. This is a very interesting comment. One and the same thing is, for some, the means to arrive at God, and for others, the obstacle preventing them from arriving at the same God. We can say something similar of miracles. Miracles are visible signs which point to an invisible reality. Ask the miracles, St. Augustine says, and see what they say about Christ. Miracles have their own language. Look, for instance, at the miraculous catch of fish described in today's Holy Gospel. It happened in the, at the beginning of our Lord's public life. The situation is near Capernaum. This first stage of the life of Christ is, as it were, preparatory. He does not yet reveal himself openly as the Messiah, but he does, en does encourage the people while at the same time selecting a small group who will be witnesses to what is to come. And the miracle happens in the lake of uh, Gennesareth, which contains many fish. The evangelist uh, describes uh, two scenes for us, one apostolic with some uh, graphic details about the fishermen mending their nets. The other scene is the miracle itself. At this stage in his preaching, the apostles, although they followed Christ a part of the time on his journeys, still carried on with their usual occupations. Now the time has, has come for their definitive call to leave all things and follow him. The miraculous catch and the apostolic vocation are shown here as one thing. So the miracle indicates many things through symbolism. But in order to understand this uh, symbolism, we need to speak the proper language. So Protestants, rationalists, modernists, they all may be able to read the passage that uh, we just read, today's gospel, but they do not speak the language of the faith. The apostles were to be fishers of men. They would spread their nets over the whole world and the results would constitute a moral miracle. St. Peter is pictured in the catacombs as seated on a rock with a fish on the end of the line. But there are other symbolisms too. The bark of Peter is the church in which the word of Christ is constantly taught. The, uh, the multitudes on the shore who do not enter the boat or the bark are the Jewish people and all who remain outside the church. Peter is the leader, so he's the owner of the boat. In the miracle, he the, symbolizes being the first uh, visible head of the church, he's the Pope. The sea is the world submerged in paganism. The net is the gospel preached by the apostles and their successors. The great quantity of fish represents the pagans who were converted and entered the church. Also, all who enter even now. The breaks in the net are heresies and systems. The fact that the boat nearly sinks represents the troubles and difficulties of the church 
in the modern world. The great catch after a night spent in vain labor represents the fertility of the church in comparison with the efforts of the synagogue. Also the fact that the success of the church is due more to Christ than to human efforts. If you pay attention, the symbolism, which I just uh, described, also confirms our diagnosis of the current situation of the church. How? Because if the bark of Peter is uh, the church in which the word of Christ is constantly taught, it means that the religion of Vatican II is not the Catholic religion, and that the present day hierarchy is not formally the hierarchy of the Catholic Church, because neither Bergoglio nor any of his bishops teach the gospel of Christ. The multitude on the shore, that is those who are outside the church, is today very numerous. There are few who have the faith, and this is precisely because of Vatican II and because of the formal vacancy of the see of Peter. The breaks in the nets are much more apparent today. Heresies system, when the church is reduced to a small number of faithful Catholics. Nevertheless, we must understand that the power of Christ continues to be manifested in all those who keep the light of faith burning during the great apostasy. After all, the point of the miracle is to show that uh, God, not man, is in control. Faith means to believe something which we cannot understand, simply because of the authority of the one who tells it to us. <clears throat> so we <clears throat> all need the faith of St. Peter. Master, he said, we have labored all the night <clears throat> and have taken nothing, but at thy word I will let down the net. Both prophecies and miracles exist for just one purpose for our sake, for our salvation, to indicate where the truth is, the truth that opens the gates of heaven. Let us recall the words of St. Thomas. In order that the salvation of men might be brought about more fitly and more surely, it was necessary that they should be taught divine truths by divine revelation. St. Paul, for instance, says that the Jews will one day return to the faith, an event which seems to be connected to the great apostasy. <clears throat> if the prophecy of St. Paul is to be fulfilled during our lifetime, it seems that our duty is no other than to uh, become instruments of God and to let down the net no matter how unlikely the conversion of the Jews may seem today. If we have learned something in the gospel, in the miracle, in the symbolism, is that God works miracles in due time. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.